I've scoured the world for the most interesting bike trails. Some of them can make your head spin. Just saying. In 1995, the Yungas Road in Bolivia was officially chosen as the most dangerous road in the world. Tragic events had been happening to both pedestrians and cyclists who dared to set their foot on it. Imagine a 43-mile-long single-track road. Now at 2,000 feet of cliff drops at every turn and no guardrail. Combine this with heavy rains during the monsoon season. Keep in mind, there's a risk of rock falls in the summer season too. Lastly, add the fact that the road doesn't get any wider than 10 feet. Congrats, you've got one dangerous road for mountain bikers. The Yungas Road used to be the only way to go from Coroaco to La Paz. In 2009, the authorities constructed a new road on a mountain close by. The highway has two lanes and is well maintained. So today, only local workers and backpackers use the Yungas Road instead of the highway. After 20 years of renovation, it's assumed that the trail has gotten safer these days. Fingers crossed if you decide to be one of those cyclists who want to try it out. There's a place where you can cycle through the water. I'm talking about Bokrijk Pond in Belgium. The cycle path is three miles long. It takes you all the way from one shore to the other. In the middle, the water comes at eye level on both sides. You can even touch it if you want. Plus, swans and some other animals accompany you on your journey. The track is nine feet wide and open to walkers and joggers. The next one on my list is the White Line Trail. It's one of the most dangerous off-road bike tracks in the world. The trail is in Arizona, USA. A short glimpse of this trail may be enough to give chills to some people. Oh my lord! Even pro mountain biker Michael Kolbeck, who has 15 years of experience, described riding on the White Line Trail as one of the scariest things he's ever done. Before this journey, he walked down the route and explored the area. He saw that the path was covered with sandstone and located at the edge of Red Rock Cliffs. Even the slightest wobble posed a tremendous risk. After exploring the area, Kolbeck let some air out of his bike tires to get some more rolling resistance and grip on the ground. He spent a few days trying to decide if he should make this bike ride or not. Eventually, he decided he had enough mental strength and physical skills to do it. And he did make it. His key to success was not looking at the terrifying surroundings or thinking about the potential dangers and just focusing on the path itself. He advised inexperienced riders not to try this trail as it's not everyone's cup of tea. The next one is called Epic Ride among cyclists. Yeah. You need to follow a 748 mile trek from Sweden to Norway, pass through the Arctic Circle and get back in just 90 hours. Midnight Sun Rondini, a 754-mile cycling event, brought together 80 cyclists from 13 different countries in Umeå, Sweden. It's not like cycling on the edge of a cliff type of thing, but the ride has its own challenges too. For starters, it involves mountains. Joe Edwards is one of the cyclists who have made this epic ride. He says they literally cycle pretty much 24 hours straight. The only time the participants are off their bikes is when they check the route and grab a bike. They don't sleep much either. He added that if he hadn't had enough water and food, he would have been in trouble. The Midnight Sun was Edward's fifth 745-mile-long rondini. Rondini is a long-distance bike ride. Cyclists attempt to ride along a certain route and complete the course within a time limit. Would you be up for it? You can get the next rush of adrenaline in Scotland. The Keelan Ridge Line is a five mile long trail located near the Isle of Skye. This one is a pro line too. It's located at more than 3,000 feet above sea level. The mountains have humid and windy weather, which is different from the weather of the rest of the island. It's also four to five degrees colder on the summits than at sea level. Yet the weather itself can also be very unpredictable. So it's advised never to assume it'll remain the same from the time you begin your trip to the end of your journey. To take this route, you need to have cycling and hiking kits and special skills. You can ride through treetops following the trail of Bosland. The trail is located in Limburg, Belgium. People refer to the path as cycling through the trees. It isn't a coincidence that the path got this name. 
It's located in the largest interrupted forest in Flanders. The trail goes through a dense forest canopy 32 feet above the ground. The path is there to encourage cyclists to connect with nature. This might be a good fit for nature lovers who don't seek a heart-pounding journey. A Via Ferrata of the Dolomites is for those mountain bikers who are always looking out for the next challenge, trying to push themselves beyond their limits. Even hikers secure themselves to the hills there. Otherwise, they might feel dizzy and fall down. Oh my God. Harold Philippe became a legend for making his first ascent of a fixed rope climbing route on a mountain bike. Christoph Thorensen filmed the bike ride in the Brenta Dolomites. The cyclist made impossible rides on different terrains, like the highest sand dune in the world or around a volcano at the height of around 20,000 feet. He says that these projects are his missions and claims that he likes to ride in unusual and challenging places. Auckland, located on New Zealand's North Island, has built a bicycle skyway above the city's busy arterial roads. It's a safe way for people to reach the city center. Then the Skyway gets connected with the existing cycle network. No need to worry about traffic. Compared to the trails for pro mountain bikers, this Skyway is like a peaceful walk in the park. The Cliffs of Moher Trail in Ireland is more like a cliff ledge than a bike trail. The path is located 702 feet above the Atlantic Ocean. Plus, the area is known for its strong winds and rocky edges. This track has become very popular thanks to the internet. In 2006, legendary mountain bikers Hans Ray and Steve Pete rode down this trail. No one has followed in their footsteps yet. A small error can throw a biker directly into the ocean. Rockfalls serve as a warning to visitors, a kind reminder of why it's important to stay away and avoid sitting near the edge of the cliffs of Moher. Fun facts time! The biggest bike parking in the world is in the Netherlands. The bikes there remind me of hundreds of people in a concert hall or at an Olympic stadium. Cycling has become a way of life in the Netherlands. Bike theft is also very common, so all these bike owners need secure and convenient places to store their transport. In Utrecht, for instance, 43% of all trips are made by bike. So the city has built a parking lot with the capacity to store more than 12,500 bikes. It has indoor ramps for easy access. Plus, there's a digital system to direct riders to empty spaces. But imagine having to find your bike among all those different sized colorful bikes. Oh my god. Oh, and did you know that the Netherlands is home to more bicycles than people? There are over 22 million bicycles and only 18 million residents. Comment below if you're adding these bike-related places to your vacation or bucket list. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.